Welcome back everyone. For today's video, we're gonna see some crazy fun puzzles that will help you visualize the board in a different way. It's not going to be as practical. These are more theoretical puzzles, but still open your mind to the possibilities of chess and the board. So let's start with this one. So let's start with this crazy puzzle. You have three pawns on the board. You can arrange them, change them. Uh, maybe you can put them one here, one over here. Now, you want to set them up in a way that it is black to move and white draws the game. So it's going to be a draw. The pawns cannot be doubled. You cannot do this. That would be cheating. So, yeah, how would you change this? It took grandmasters one hour to figure this out. But there is one solution and it can be done. This is going to be a hint. This isn't the right solution, but it's close enough just to give you more time to think and analyze. We know intuitively that the pawns have to be isolated. If you have any pawn chain, then if you have the pawn here, you wouldn't be able to capture one pawn and then be able to go back because the other pawn will be promoting. So here it is black to move and it's still winning for black, right? King g7, then let's say that you take the pawn, king takes on g3. Then what black is going to do is gain as much space on the edge file. So let's say that you play something like king g4 fighting for this space. Okay, uh, king g6 gaining the position, right? So it's going to box you out of that, out of this. Now you are out of these two files. So king is going to go king h5. So if you, you, you cannot really take the pawn. I mean, you, you take this pawn. And then, yeah, the king just gains more space. So maybe you want to play king e3. So you're like wasting one tempo. So you can put the king in 6 one, but that doesn't work either. Uh, the king can just play king h4. So, and then, okay, you take the pawn. And then now th this is a free corridor for this pawn, right? So it doesn't work. Uh, let's go with the actual solution. So this is the solution for this problem. You take this pawn. Okay, sorry, it's black to play. The difference is now the pawn is on h6. Before it was on h7. And the king is in the corner. That is also very important. So here, king h7. Now we can take the pawn on g3. Let's say the king goes to g6, right? So now you go for the opposition. You have a six one slash slash opposition in this yeah in this position. Now you uh, let's say that they want to push the pawn. Okay, no problem. You are on time, so you can play something like uh, king f three. If they play e, I don't know, like e two for example. Yeah, yeah, you are in, still in time. And now they try to promote. You will be able to come back. Right, almost like the rule of the square. So yeah, there there will be no no problem. It's not this is not rule of the square, but yeah, there will be no problem for for you to come back. And it was all the space difference of the pawn not being here because you cannot you you want to gain a space with the king. That's the whole point. With black, you want to gain this space and infiltrate. But if the pawn is here on h6. Now you, you cannot infiltrate as you have to waste more moves to go here. So let's go with other variation because you might say, okay, wait, at this point, okay, we could play king g7. Okay, we take the pawn, king g6, king g4. Okay, what if the, what if black decides to give a check? Uh, There's no problem. You go king f4 and then king h6, right? Uh, you cannot, you cannot really push this pawn. You will be able to come uh, take this pawn and go back so king takes you you still play a uh, king takes on e4 and then king g6 so th yeah just to show you the other variation that doesn't really work yeah, you start pushing the pawn here so here you can come back and uh, you want to gain the position with the king but you are perfectly on time so you keep giving a check and we know this is a draw all right let's say somebody gives you 32 knights and they tell you how would you arrange these knights in a way that they don't capture each other 
thinking that they, they will be able to capture each other even when you're playing white or black. So here you can place them on the same color complex like this. So every, every knight is placed on light square colors and no knight can capture each other. The same thing will happen if we place all the knights on the dark square colors and they are covering actually light squares, all of them. Right, so the solution is 32. You will be able to place 32 knights on the same color complex and the same thing would happen if we place a bunch of light square knights. They wouldn't be able to capture each other anyway. This is a very interesting puzzle as well. You have 32 bishops on the board. Now, how would you arrange them on the board so that no bishop can capture another one? Alright, feel free to pause the video. I'm going to skip to the solution now. You will have 14. You will have 14 bishops. I saw some comments on response uh, online. They said 16. But I don't see how you can play 16. If I want to place a bishop in, on the corners, they will be able to capture each other. Right? So that wouldn't be possible. And you can also place them in this way. And still, you still have 16. So... There is a very creative solution I saw online, which is this. You have pawns in between the bishops. Now you can place 32. So nobody said that you cannot place uh, any other piece in between, right? So now the bishops cannot capture each other and you have 32. Very interesting. I'm going to put it here to give credit to the person. And now let's say that you have... 32 bishops, all of them in the same color complex, light square bishops, and you have your king placed here. So it doesn't matter where, where it is, it can be here, it can be anywhere. Now this is a dread draw. So you don't have other pieces, you don't have a, a way to checkmate the king. The computer says this is plus 96 of material, but it's still a draw. Same thing here, we have 32 rooks. What will be the maximum number of rooks that you can place on the board so no rook will be able to capture each other? How would you place them on the board? Feel free to pause the video now. I'm going to go to the solution. So the solution will be 8. You can place 8 on the board. So in this case, no rook is on uh, interfering with each other. They cannot capture each other. And there is some beautiful geometry here. And there is different solutions to this problem. You can arrange, arrange them in this way, for example. So we have the same kind of pattern where there is no interference. So here is another solution. We have these uh, diagonals. Then how many solutions do we have possible? So it's 8 factorial. 8 factorial, 8 permutations. Eight, no, sorry. 40,320 different permutations which is the same as 8 factorial. Now, let's go with the queen. Let's say somebody gives you 32 queens. You don't have to use all of them. But how many queens will you be able to place on the board without any queen being able to attack each other? So, uh, feel free to pause the video now. The solution is 8. The solution is 8 queens. But how would you arrange them? So, I'm going to show you one arrangement and we're going to find the next the next queen here. So here we have, say, seven, seven queens. Let me know if you can find the square where you can put the queen. So the extra queen. We have a lot of... The problem here is not the same as the rook. Uh, the problem is the diagonals, right? We are covering di diagonals. So, yeah. If we, I'm not going to do this with all of the queens. But yeah, the solution, I hope you see it is to place the queen here on h3. So now no queen is attacking each other. There is no overlap. And the number of solutions possible is 92. We can arrange the queens in 92 ways and they wouldn't be attacking each other. Now with pawns, we have 32 pawns. How would you arrange them in a way that they wouldn't be able to capture each other? So I started thinking about this problem and any, uh, any like a uh, diagonal arrangement is going to be inefficient because you're going to run out of space. Probably you can find a way to, to do it. 
but it's gonna be kind of awkward so i came up with this you can do it like eight by four an eight by four horizontally then you are actually occupying the 32 points and if you do it vertically it works all the same so let me show you here uh, here you also have it doesn't matter where you start maybe you can start on the b file then d file the f file and the h file but you still have 8 by 4 32 32 points and they don't overlap they don't capture each other so yeah you're actually occupying all of them thanks for watching everyone please comment like and subscribe join this channel for only one dollar and i will see you in the next one take care